Hello, this is Overlord Boat, and today we're going to be talking about the new Tier 10 Dutch cruiser, the Godian Liu. So this ship is still in the... Uh, it's not in its final stage yet, that's why you see the work in progress at the bottom left of the screen. Uh, until 10.8, which could have already passed, the ship is still able to be changed. So, if I need to do another video update that, I will. So, let's get into it. So the Godin de Leo is the is the tier 10 Dutch cruiser. Uh, we already have the uh, other Dutch cruisers out currently. Uh, you can get them through the tech tree line. But pretty much this is the tier 10 version. So the ship's uh, gun range is 19.1 if you do build into it. It's 16.9 if you don't, which is kind of short. But if you played the tier 9, it's almost identical in how you play and it has the same uh strengths and weaknesses but let's get into the build of this vessel uh real quick so the build of this ship i have it as the uh main armament dcp1 aiming systems propulsion uh concealment and the gun range there and for the commander i have it as uh, gun rotation, uh, gun feeder, the uh, anti right here, the superintendent concealment, uh, AP for the extra AP strength uh, damage, adrenaline rush, and the close quarters. So let's switch on back to the game. So as you can tell, this ship is pretty maneuverable, going about 33.5 knots. The armor scheme is pretty similar to the tier 9, but instead of having the uh, not as strong bow this does have a 40 uh, millimeter uh, icebreaker bow on the bottom with about a 26 millimeter uh, top armor uh, for the bow as well i'm just turning on the full interface because you guys know how it is with this interface it never turns on but so as you can see in the match i'm currently getting to a kind of position i will be reversing back to face off against the fenzia uh, this cruiser is very strong at doing one thing and that's really kiting if you try to push in too much with this ship It does suffer a lot from citadels. It's not the best for that um, It does eat citadels really 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 poor really really bad um, If you've ever seen or played at the Dutch cruisers, they do have a one strong weakness and that is with the anti-air and the uh, Dutch armament the airdrops that's pretty much the gimmick of the ship is using the airdrops. Now, if you do hit your target with them, they do do a lot of damage. But for the gimmick, it does pay a hefty price with its guns. Its guns are pretty poor. Uh, it has one of the lower DPMs of the tier 10 cruisers. I think it has one of the lowest uh, DPMs out of the tier 10 cruisers with like how affected the guns are uh, with AP and HE. But pretty much, as you can see, the dispersion isn't too bad uh, for a cruiser. But at the same time, you can definitely see how Torpedoes, I'm back, um, the guns are not the best as well. But the ship is able to turn quite... A, quite uh, it is a quite maneuverable vessel. So it's always fun to be able to be that maneuverable. So later in the match, you'll see how the airstrikes work. They uh, The tier 10 does get two, and they go up to 13 kilometers. So if you have the charges ready, you can do air drops 13 kilometers away from your vessel. So if you're like sitting behind an island and there's an enemy sitting other, behind another island or somewhere you can't shoot, you can drop air drops on them, which is a, it's pretty cool. So if you're dealing with a opponent that's camping a lot, you can just drop an airstrike on them, which is pretty nifty. Now, as you can see here, I do have a completely broadside MOSFET and only do 5k. The shot was a little bit off. But at the same time, it should have done a lot more. Like, I feel like it should have done a little bit more there, but the dispersion was off. As you can see, I did do the airstrikes there. Now, the airstrikes take a long time to get to their target. It takes about, as you saw the timer, it takes about 14 seconds for them to get to their target. 
Now that's a pretty long time to get to their target, so you kind of have to predict your target way in advance to be able to hit them effectively. Now, for the Dutch cruisers, they're not really good at brawling. Like, they're more, like... They're meant to be more longer range or sitting behind islands using their guns in a safer position. As you're about to see uh, in a little bit. But it does have a strong bow, so it's able to withstand shots from cruisers when it's bow in. But if you're showing your cruiser your broadside, you're going to take a lot of damage. As you can see, I'm being shot at by the boss over there. Torpedoes, I'm but... With this dispersion here, you're going to see how much damage it does do to the boss, the MOSFA. So with good dispersion and a broadside cruiser, you can slap them. As you can see, I did three citadels and five pins for 29k damage, which is really, really good. But if you look here, I do try aiming for the armor belt here, and it does ricochet. Um, it kind of shows the pen angle isn't the best for this ship. And now we kind of do a little dance here. He did, was able to knock out my gun, but I was able to repair and get it back up. Now, I do find this part pretty funny here, because he starts just showing me his broadside, and... <laughs> that is a, a fully destroyed Des Moines. So, even though the Des Moines was, like, at first having the advantage, I was able to get the broadside shot on him and take him out, which is very nicely done. So, here you're going to be able to see a successful drop, so you can see how much damage it does uh, onto the Fenzia. At this point, I thought I was already dead, so I kind of panicked and kind of just relaxed a little bit. But yeah, as you see, I hit five bombs and 90, 90, 100 damage. Now, let's talk a little bit more of the ship now I, I'm dead now. So, with the build that I showed earlier, you get a range of 19.1 kilometers. Now, that's not a lot of range for a cruiser for tier 10. So, you have to be really cautious uh, when playing this vessel. But the thing is, is that this ship does have a 10.3 kilometer range and you need to be able to do the concealment. So you're able to be really stealthy when you're playing this vessel. Now, the reload on this ship is 16 uh, seconds, which is a pretty long reload. That's why I need to have gun feeder on this vessel. But this ship does have DFAA, which gives it very, very, very strong anti-air, which is really, like, it's really good. Really good anti-air. I couldn't really find a match where... I did okay in where I, I had anti-air, like, had to fight anything with the CVs. So, I couldn't really showcase the anti-air, so I do apologize. But, let's just get down, while we wait for the match to be done, let's talk a little bit about um, how I would recommend this ship uh, for randoms, clan battles, and ranked. So, for randoms, I could see this as being a fun ship to just meme around with friends in a div. Uh, to just drop a bunch of those, uh, chart a bunch of those airstrikes onto enemies. I could see that being a, a fun factor. The ship also does have a nice bow, so you're able to kind of bow and do a push with the vessel as long as you have support. But at the same time, if you show any kind of broadside or you're aft, you're going to get, you're going to get decimated for sure. So for randoms, I would recommend I would recommend the uh, Godian, and I do apologize if I uh, mispronounce the name. And again, the ship does come out in ten point eight, so that's around September sixteenth, seventeenth, or eighteenth, I do believe. Um, if it's already past that date, then there you go. Now, let's, and since we just talked about random, let's talk about ranked. So, would I recommend this ship for ranked? Mm, well, with most of the ranked meta ships being around radar, um, either having a strong radar or being a really strong HE thrower or AP thrower, um, I wouldn't really consider this ship being a good ranked contender. 
with there being less ships, it could do nice with being an anti air ship against a CV since most of the ranked tier 10s have a lot of CVs. Especially FDRs. So I could see this being a potential bring it in as an anti air support when there's days where there's a lot of ant a lot of CVs roaming around. Because this ship does have a six kilometer uh, anti air, which is pretty normal range for, for anti air, which is pretty it's pretty and it's really really strong as well. I think it's one of the top anti air ships in the tier the tier uh, out of the cruisers for tier ten, also because of the fact it does have DFAA. So I could recommend it for being like an anti air cruiser. Now it is gonna suffer against the more kiting cruisers, uh, say like a Navesky or Hedenberg or Henry or Sal, anything that can really kite away and get outside its range, since it does only have a 19.1 kilometer range, it would really suffer against that as well. And battleships would just have a field day, just slapping that Citadel over and over and over again. So for ranked, it'd mostly just be for more just anti-air like more of like an anti-air or getting those pesky island hugging dds or cruisers or even submarines because if there's a submarine on the surface and you hit them with those depth chart with those airstrikes they're literally it's almost an instant death i remember when i was playing the submarines and somebody dropped an airstrike on me and in a tier eight and it just completely decimated my submarine one airstrike just dropped right on top of it and just decimated it. So if you're not careful uh, in a submarine against this thing, you're going to get slapped. And of course, this is on the surface or at the first depth at either 10 meters or 6 meters, depending upon what country sub you're playing. But if you go to your operating depth, uh, the, the airstrikes cannot hit you. All stations. Concentrate fire on so let's talk about the final implementation of what I recommend now for clan battles. I do not recommend this ship for clan battles, and the reasons are for the following. The guns are one of the lower DPMs out of the tier 10 cruisers. It, it doesn't have the best AP, and its HE isn't the best either. It it's like even though it's supposed to be able to start fires, it really has trouble starting the fires. It's mostly meant to be more of a HE. It's supposed to be like an AP throwing ship, but at the same time, it has such a long reload, and it does have trouble getting citadels consistently. Like yes, this match I did get a lot of citadels, but that was a broadside Bosfa, and that was also a close range shotgun shot onto a Des Moines. But usually, you have a lot of trouble of getting citadels onto anything due to its dispersion and the pen angles and such for the shells and the dispersion, of course. Now, the airstrikes are a nice gimmick for, for potentially for clan battles, but the gimmick just is not worth... It, it, it costs too much on the guns... And the rest of the ship to be able to make it worth it for putting it into like a clan battle scenario. You'd have to have multiple of these ships for the airstrikes to be worth it and very well coordinated. At the same time, uh, an enemy team is going to be able to see the airstrikes coming in and shoot, possibly shoot down the airstrikes even before they get to the, to the target. So the, the gimmick may not even be worth it. Now, it does have a very nice 10.3 kilometer concealment, which is one of the highest at tier 10. So I could see it potentially being a nice, like, kind of stealth kind of cruiser, but with how much radars play and the kiting abilities of, of cruisers play in the tier 10 uh, clan battle season, I don't think it's going to be able to work out as well. Now, this ship does have a heal as well, which is really nice for a tier 10 cruiser, but most cruisers at tier 10 have a heal anyway. And the only thing that makes this heal special is kind of how it's fast acting, where it has a shorter reload, so you're able to get a little bit quicker. And that's pretty much what I'd recommend. So for randoms, I'd recommend it for being fun and memey. For ranked, I can kind of see it. 
I can kind of see it for ranked, but for clan battles, I really do not uh, recommend it at all. So that's what I would recommend for the Godion uh, Leo. And I do apologize if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, but yeah, it looks like the Conqueror is still fighting on. This dude has been fighting on forever. This has been going on for a long time. But he is about to go down. But if you guys do have any questions about the uh, Gideo, Godion uh, Leo, uh, definitely leave them down in the comments. I do appreciate when you guys uh, leave me any questions or concerns about the upcoming ships. Now this ship is currently still in, is still not finalized. It is finalized at 10.8. So as soon as 10.8 comes out, it will then be finalized. So it is still up to be changed at that point. But yeah, so in the match, it, I did 92,000 damage. Uh, I got one kill, seven citadels, and I got about fifth on the team. So it wasn't too bad. It was an okay match. It was all right. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have any questions, definitely leave them down below, and I'll talk to you all later.